Andrew's got some fantastic um, questions here, but um, Roy Kirk, for example, he resigned um, as manager, but he stayed on as a coach. Yes. Um, why do you think he wasn't such a great success as a manager, Roy? Well, you do get that a lot, don't you? I mean, you know, like you got Bobby Charlton, for, who will go to Bobby Charlton in Manchester United, he tried to manage his job and it didn't work for him, did it? And so on. Roy, to me, was one of the best centre-halves, mm. I think, Cambridge had in those days. I'm talking about, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go uh, put Kirky against the uh, league players today because that's wrong for me to do that. I can only go on what I played with and he certainly was a good player and he was good to Cambridge. He lived in that bungalow across the road there and he'd, he'd done a lot for Cambridge. It was just unfortunate he's not with us anymore now, bless his heart, but um, Jean is his wife and I spoke to her not long ago. But why, I don't know why, Roy was too nice a bloke, I think, to be a manager. Do you know what I mean? You, you can't be one of the players and also a manager. If, you know, if you've been a player with those players and then you suddenly become manager, you're really, really better off to go off somewhere and be a manager somewhere else, mm -hmm. personally. But he, he, liked to, he liked to be a... Roy did. He fetched me from Hereford when I had the... Uh, all them stitches around here when I was took off on a stretcher and I had 15 stitches around there, look, around there. And um, Roy came back to Hereford to pick me up from the hospital and when we was on our way home, we stopped at a pub because he liked, as I said, he liked his pine. And the bar parted like that because I'd got this great big wad in all this blood coming down this thing. <laughs> and they thought I was a bloody robber, I think. But uh, <laughs> anyway, you could you far away. Well, perhaps at the other end of the spectrum, mm -hmm. as far as managers go, was Bill Leavers, of course, who came in yeah. 1967. Yeah. How did you find uh, Bill as no, a manager? Um, I, I, I never argued, let's put it this way, I can make this straight, I never argued with Bill Leavers. He was an argumental chap because he'd always got to be right, but I never argued with Bill and I praise him for what he did for Cambridge United, but I didn't like the man. He didn't give me a chance at the right time. He knew that I'd stayed the nine years to help Cambridge to get in the Football League. He wasn't taking me to Germany and the supporters found out and kicked up, as you can know from the papers, if you'd have had the evening news in those days. It was always in the paper every night, letters in there, why are you not taking Rodney and all this and that. He weren't going to take me to Germany. I don't know why, because I never argued with him. He didn't like it because the supporters used to sing Rodney behind the goal, you know, singing out Rodney. And he used to moan and say to me in the dressing room, you know, oh, I see your family was here, but my family never came because they didn't live here. Um, so I, I can't take away what he did for Cambridge. Don't get me wrong, he did marvellous. And he'd been a marvellous footballer himself. And that's why I didn't argue with the bloke. Because he'd, he'd been in a higher grade football than me and he knew more about football than I did. But you can ask anybody who played in that era, I did never, ever did I argue with him. Um, I got on with my job and, that, <clears throat> you know, that was it. But I was the biggest disappointment was when I walked by the bank on uh, Mitchum's Corner and this paper was sticking out of the letterbox. And I walk in by and I just happened to pull the paper. Don't ask me why. Mm -hmm. And there it was on the back page, uh, Cambridge United's long-serving goalkeeper sacked. I didn't know nothing about it. And that's how I was told. Uh, they, were, they weren't retaining me and taking me to, to Germany on tour. Eventually they took me to Germany. They played five games and I played in all five. He played me in all five games. And then I come back here and I found out I was the only one he wasn't keeping. Why I don't honestly I don't know because I never argued with him I, I I never questioned him in anything if you can understand what I mean I never queried him if he got onto me you know there was times when he gave me a roasting and a rollicking fair enough if I deserved it I did he once gave me the biggest uh, 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 
Timmy when we played Bedford and we won 2-1 and he said he'd never seen a goalkeeping performance like it because I won the game for Cambridge. He said that in front of all the players. If it weren't for Rodney here, he actually said this. He said we'd have lost 10 today. So he said you can give your bonuses to Rodney. I mean, I'd never, I'd never heard him say that. But he, he felt he could say it that day. But no, Mr Levers was a very, very good manager. Don't get me wrong. And I, I appreciate what he did for Cambridge. He, no two ways about it. Mm. We had some bad managers. I think the best one was John Doherty, but you know, behind the scenes, I'm talking about. You know, you know. Thinking back to one or two of the players you played yes. with, yeah, there some great names crop yeah. up, like there was Gentleman Jim, Sharky, yes. yeah. uh, Johnny Haas, yeah. uh, Jimmy Gibson. What were your memories of, of well, people I, like that? I think Jimmy was here longer, obviously, and um, I liked Jimmy because his wife was Irish, nothing, you know, but it was a good laugh every time, you know. Jimmy never told Isabel nothing. So when she used to have a go at Josie, my wife, oh, they didn't pay him this uh, that week, did they? We weren't to say anything because Jim, you'd see him walk by here and he'd be tearing his wage slip up as he went by. <laughs> so poor Isabel never knew anything. But Jimmy, it was, I thought, it was as good a player I'm talking about when I was there, the first two or three years, was as good a player as Cambridge. I thought he was a brilliant player. He played half-back and he played in the forward line. Yeah. And uh, I thought he was a very, very good player. Um, Johnny Az, uh, there was no better uh, footballer who'd got a better shot, you know, for goal than Johnny Az. And he came out with some good ones, you know. He used to say, oh, I don't like vodka, uh, I don't like vodka, but I like whiskey. And we used to say, what, John? He said, I don't like whiskey, but I like vodka. So we said, no, you got your letters <laughs> mixed up a little bit here, John. And uh, we used to get him on going away matches to tell us, because he was supposed to be in the Hungarian, you know, and he used to say how he popped out of a tank with a pistol, you know, firing at people with a pistol. I mean, he's in a bloody tank and he's got a pistol in his hands. <laughs> anyway, that always used to bide the time away. That was good, you know. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> uh, well, who, who, who are your best mates among the players? Who, who do well, you I think, remember? Uh, obviously, uh, I like Brian Bobbis um, uh, because Brian was here when I came here. Poor old Fred Al. I know Fred's not with us anymore now. Freddie Al was a, uh, a good friend. Um, uh, Robin Hardy, um, Robin lived two doors up and uh, he somehow drove me by me because he'd come in at the wrong time, you know, oh, I'll make a mash, he'd say, because he comes from all that way, do not he? And I'd have to let him make a cup of tea and things like that in the middle of doing something, you know what I mean? He was that type of lad. And Billy Day, he was another nice lad. He kept greyhounds. And I used to go to Graham Racing with him to what, Peterborough. Milton Road, was that? Yeah, yeah. Milton Road and Peterborough. Um, oh, they, they were, they were, we was all good lads because we lived close together, didn't we, if you couldn't sell me. We had quite a few houses Cambridge did in them days, didn't they? You had, you had the bungalow across here, you had 551 that I was living in, then you had 555, then you had three in Elfleda Road. We was all... <coughs> together, do you know what I mean? But what we had was after a game, we all was together, right? If it was a home game, we'd all go in the support club. We didn't have our own bar like they started um, uh, at one stage at Cambridge. I wasn't here when they started it, but for us to get our enjoyment and talk to the supporters would be to go into the supporters club. So we'd all congregate in there and like I said, I wouldn't come home here till after six, seven o'clock. Uh, and, and, and I've, you know, not being a tight person, which I'm not, people will tell you oh, I'm stupid with it, I never put my hand in my pocket once. You know, that, oh, it was marvellous. But you was talking football all the time, but yeah. you know what you would have done here. I mean, I remember Curly Smart's dad. I remember him getting hold of him and throwing him out the ground. You know, Curly Smart, he's a rough old boy apparently in Cambridge, wasn't he? I understand from locals, he was a Curly's dad. But, 
But I remember his dad getting, you know, he had to go at the referee when we used to be in dressing rooms in the corner of the ground, you know. Oh, it was, it was <coughs> lovely. We used to muck in to do the draw for Dudley Arliss. You know what I mean? Mm. Were those changing rooms in the corner of the ground yes. where the where the pool's office yes. is and where the toilets are? Yes. They used to be the changing rooms. Yeah, that's oh. right. They used to be there and we used to have a community <coughs> bath, you know, uh, a big, big concrete one. Hmm. And if you didn't get in there quickly, you know, it'd be as bloody black as, as the football pitch <laughs> in the winter, you know. Uh, but it, we, we, we loved it. Yeah, it did, you know, I think a lot of it is, come on, we didn't, you didn't have your televisions in them days yeah. like you have now. I mean, let's be fair. I mean, I I could have I could have watched the game last night. I get fed up with football being on the television, though. But that's the trouble. To, yeah. well, you had to muck in because nothing else. There was nothing else to do, was there? No. I used to go to Grantchester with Herbert Robinson's. When Herbert Robinson's garage used to be down near Market Road here, I used to go with the governor. Um, I was good friends with him and Johnny Green, who had the garage near the Catholic Church, and they used to come and pick me up on a Saturday night. We'd go to Grantchester, the Blue Ball, and the landlord there, we hadn't been in there a quarter of an hour, and there was sandwiches and cooked meals, everything for us, didn't you know what I mean? Because it was all football, wasn't it, in Cambridge and on Saturday and Sunday? It was lovely, really. You went out on loan oh, to brilliant. Brentwood. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and um, absolutely. So you uh, actually got a championship medal, Southern League. Yes. Um, Southern Premier League Division Cup. Championship yes. medal. Yeah. And you also got uh, a Division One Championship medal with Brentwood. Brentwood and the Southern League Cup. Cup. Winning the Southern League Cup, we beat Cheltenham. If you remember, yeah. it, it, with Cambridge, yeah. we beat them one nothing. We drew naught naught. And, what, and we went to Cheltenham and beat them one nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had to have a good game that day, but at least that was good, really. <laughs> Keep a clean sheet. Um, yeah, and then I went to Brentwood because I'd broken my leg. And uh, that was so all right, it's the clock up there. I ain't got a cuckoo you know, or a chaffinch or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, they, 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 I broke my leg, so to get me after I was. I had the plaster off and everything. They loaned me out to Brentwood and they paid my wages, you see. Absolutely magnificent. Then I went to Bury St Edmunds mm -hmm. and I had two seasons at Bury St Edmunds and do you know, they, that was before the A14, they used to come by here for most of their games. The bus used to pull in over there. My family, never known it in football for your, to, your family to be allowed on the team coach. Mm -hmm just the players and the directors. My wife, the two kids, off we'd go in the bus, off we'd go and play Hereford. Oh, oh everybody, oh, you see, that's the sort of thing in those days, you know, that was good, wasn't it? You know, it yeah. was, I mean, I understand now the chairman of this football club goes with the supporters on their bus. I mean, isn't that marvellous? I think that's absolutely marvellous. I really, really do. Why, why shouldn't they? I think, ah, uh, oh, Josie, you know, my wife, she voluntary works over here, don't, don't take any money off them, and um, she, she works with Dave, and actually loves Dave, and um, I think that's lovely, I really, really do. I hope you don't get too nice that, that you know, that things are, are sad for him in the end, because his heart and soul is Cambridge United. Whatever people, I, can I, I only speak of people like you three people. I'll only speak as I find. I don't speak behind people's backs. I t tell them to the face if I don't like them, I don't like them. What I know of Dave, the chairman, I think he's absolutely magnificent. The, the amount of work him and Colin Proctor put in, you know, as I know, I, you know, as I know. I don't, I don't know so much of you people behind the scenes because um, this is all good what you're doing because it's all... For Cambridge United, I think it's absolutely magnificent. I do. Can I just squeeze one last question yeah. that, that, that Andrew Ray here? And, and I have great memories of this match. It was your benefit match. Yes. And um, you got a team together of, of current and former United players, and there were people like Peter McParland as well. Yes, he Derek was. Kevin. Yes. 
and it was Pat Sayward. Yes. And you played a, um, a team from that TV show that was on the called time. Called United. Called United. That's right. Um, what are your memories of that night? Well, what I, I remember quickly of that is that I had more trouble with the, uh, uh, not Jehovah's Witnesses, but um, um, that didn't want sport on a Saturday, on a Sunday. Don't forget, I held the first match to be played out here on a Sunday. Right. That was my benefit game. Mm. It cost me a lot of money to have to have extra police. They came to see me yeah. because there was going to be trouble on the day. And if you remember on the day, I think I nearly had 6,000 people. Of that was a lot of people. When you think to come to see my game, I thought it was magnificent. And then you say, why did I stay at Cambridge? Well, you can understand why. And I, Lord's Observance Day, that's it. That was them, they come knocking on my door, we won't allow it, all this and that, you shouldn't be doing sport on a Sunday. But the match itself, I got together, you know, ex-United players and uh, some of the really older ones, and the United off the television, they had a lot of Birmingham, that was playing for Birmingham at the time, you know, was playing for Birmingham City, but they used to help uh, to put this, serial together it used to be on once a week called united didn't it united 11 or something i don't know bridge which united was the name of the team i remember oh was it all oh, right well <laughs> I, I suddenly thought well i'll have that and like i said everybody worked for, didn't take no money off me that day you know all you do all any nobody took nothing off me nothing um i'm just trying to think what i was talking to you how much i made but i don't mind telling you um, anyway, it was a lot of money f for that day, if you can understand what I mean. Mm. And everything was mine. I had a dance down the drill hall in uh, East Road. Oh, yeah. That was a very Derek Cook, I think the band was called. That was good. Um, I got a lot of money for that. Then Mrs. Harrison, she did a draw for me, uh, yeah, which she would, wouldn't she? Yeah, she and uh, uh, people. I didn't have to do it all myself, but so many people donated uh, prizes. It, absolutely magnificent. And then people say to me, oh, you know, stupid boys staying, you know, at Cambridge when you had a chance to go to Fulham and all this stuff. Well, you can see why. And just the same in the fire service. I got treated like a king in the bloody fire service. See, I only got in there, really, to be perfectly honest with you, I was as good as anybody practical because I was fit wasn't I I'd just finished football but I mean he wanted somebody to represent Cambridgeshire England Cambridgeshire football nobody had played for football for Cambridgeshire fire service for England so the chief was a bit of a football fanatic Everton so he, he said do you, would you mind if you play play for England Fire Service. I thought, well, that'll get me out of a lot of things. I said, no, not at all, sir, sir. And um, I think that's what really got me in because I wasn't the brightest of uh, writing uh, dictation and things like that. 